Good morning. morning. Welcome to Youth Sunday. All right, so for announcements, uh, we would like you to please cross the friendship register down the pew. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please include your address so we can deliver you a goodie bag later this week. Uh, Spirit Sisters will be meeting on May 2nd at 630 at West Central Illinois Art Center for a night of painting and fun. See Jan Rockwell or Sue Adams for details. There is a planning meeting today at 3 p.m. for the VBS alternative programs. May is our month to stock shelves at Lowe's and Fishes. Please sign up on the bulletin board off the parlor. And then we have an uh, announcement from Alex Adams. He will be selling world's finest chocolates for $1 each in the uh, parlor following church today. All proceeds will go to help the WIU Severe Weather Club. If you didn't bring any cash this week, he will be here next week as well. Let us prepare our minds and hearts for worship as we listen to my sister's prelude. Please stand up for the call to worship. God, sometimes we feel evil with our actions. Let God guide us. Let God guide us to peace. God will show the way. Let God show us how to receive peace. Let there be peace. Let, please join us in our opening hymn 577.
congregation. Um, we give you thanks, God, for guiding us through the evil and helping us through all the obstacles in life. Thank you for bringing peace into our lives. for sin today. Um, Charvel Reagan came through surgery this past week, had a little setback with dehydration yesterday. Um, Mary Stepanovich is slowly bouncing back from uh, pneumonia. Chuck Ingersoll had the flu and he's recovering at home. Florence Washburn is on hospice care. Please keep Norma, Norma and Dave in prayer as they care for Florence. Rich and Jan Stone King, friends of John and Char, had a bad motorcycle accident this week, this past week, and sustained multiple injuries. We pray for the people of Ecuador as they struggle with a major earthquake. We also pray for the people of Houston as they struggle with major rain and flooding. As of today, uh, we pray for Benjamin Noah, the son of Rebecca Craig Bailey, as he will soon undergo heart surgery. Uh, we celebrate with uh, Marcia Higgins. She had a successful surgery this week and learning, and she also learned that there was no cancer. Um, we continue to pray for Jim Ray, Char, uh, Sh uh, Sharon Spangler, Martin Alvarado, Brad Becker, Norma, Sh Norma Shirley, Shirley, sorry, uh, and Connie Matosi. Matosi. All right. As we think of all these people mentioned aloud, let us begin our morning prayer in silence. Dear Heavenly Father, we are your children and sometimes we are lost, but then you bring us peace and hope. The overwhelming day-to-day -day events are too much sometimes. However, we forget to call out to you. We pray that you help us be more aware of your presence and help us with our small and large struggles in life. We continue to obsess over the fact that the storms are getting bigger and we are more lost. Strengthen us to push through these storms and think of you. Remind us to pray. Pray like your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Such a hard test. 
I studied every night last week, but I don't think I did very well. Yeah, it was very, it was really difficult. It's a good thing we had that extra credit project last month that will help our grades. I didn't do the extra credit project. And I didn't have enough time to study for yesterday's test. I've been so busy with, other, with my other classes and activities, it's just crazy. Well, hopefully we all did better than we thought. Well, let's go to class. Good morning, class. I have your tests graded and ready to hand back. Now, I'm not surprised that the average was lower than usual. It was a very hard test. I will now hand you back your papers. If you have any questions, you can come to my office and ask me. C plus, not as good as I thought. I got a B minus. The studying must have really helped. I got a D minus. This is gonna tank my grade. It's just one test. I'm sure it won't put you that bad. I just don't understand math. I haven't done well on any of the other tests. Are you guys ready for the test today? Yeah, I think so. I studied pretty hard last night. I think I'll do okay. Well, let's do this. Hello, class. I hope you're ready for the test today. <laughs> now that you're all here, I will begin passing out the exam. Good luck. Class, you're dismissed. Did you see that the teacher posted, posted our grades last night? Yeah, I got it. Hey, thank goodness. Me too. So did I. You got it? You did? I thought you wouldn't understand this stuff. Guys, I... I cheated. I feel really bad about it, too. What? You cheated. I didn't have any choice. I just, I don't understand calculus, and I need to pass. You can't just keep this to yourself. You need to tell a teacher. Yeah, it's the right thing to do. Well, hello, Carrie. How can I assist you? What may it be? I, I, I cheated on the test, and I feel really, really bad about it. I just, I don't have enough time to study with all my other classes, and I'm just so busy, and I just don't understand. Well, I appreciate that you've come in person to apologize to me. And how about you come by after school tomorrow, and we'll go through the material together. But remember, this test still reflects badly on your grade.
Alrighty. Well, you kept messing up on this one little part here. Everything else is correct, but you keep moving this one number in the wrong place. If you move it here, you'll be good to go. Go on to the next problem. Let's see if you can get this one, if you have the knowledge. I, I don't believe the universe. You never know until you try. I, I, I think I got it. I, I finally got it. See, all you had to do was trust and believe in yourself. It was there all along. Today's sermon comes from assorted scriptures from Ecclesiastes 1 through 16. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's mind, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Also, that it is God's gift to man that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. That which is already has been, that which is to be already has been, and God seeks what has been driven away. After being asked to write part of a sermon for this year's Youth Sunday, I sat and wondered what there was to talk about dealing with obstacles that arise through evil while God guides us to the future by ultimately bringing peace into our lives. The words that automatically stood out to me were obstacles in future. As I started to brainstorm, I began to wander off thinking about the past and the future, both dealing with high school and what is yet to come. It simply reminded me of how often I get the questions, what do you wanna be when you get older? Or what are you doing after high school? I quickly came to the re realization that the get older and after high school part is now. As some of you may know, I've committed to Illinois State University in Bloomington Normal, where I major in some sort of business, whether it's marketing administration, accounting, or finance. There's also the possibility that I may join the dance team there along with other clubs and organizations that they provide. Yet that's the least of it. As I started to prepare for college life and the real deal, I realized it wasn't as easy as it intended to be. Whether it was a late night scholarship essays or finding the perfect match as a roommate, I was and still am determined to set a goal for college and achieving it. As the Merriam-Webster Dictionary states, determination is a quality that makes you continue to try and achieve something that is difficult. Throughout high school and through the college selection process, I realized that determination was one of the biggest traits that I needed to focus on. Even in the coming months as I pre prepared to be a freshman in college, I will still need determination. It will almost be impossible to reach the goals I have set for myself without this trait. To some, high school may have seemed like a breeze, while to others it's the most difficult four years of their lives. Not only are you figuring out what you like or don't like, what your biggest pet peeves are, and what you think you can or cannot do, you're also finding yourself. Going into high school, I didn't know if I wanted to play soccer, or basketball, softball, or even dance. I didn't know if I wanted to run to be a student council officer, or if I just wanted to sit back. Entering my freshman year of high school, I honestly didn't even know if I wanted to take a homework-filled business class or a cooking class just so that I could eat the leftovers. I did know, though, that I wanted to stay involved and do what I could do in order to keep my grades up and get to the point where I could go to the college of my dreams and end up doing something that I enjoy. All of this decision making has brought plenty of obstacles. Obstacles as in applying for my first job, or not getting my best grade on the human anatomy test this semester, or that one time I decided to finish a whole project instead of getting a night's sleep because it was due the next day. There were other obstacles such as learning to dance with the team a day before we were to perform it, or being a half a point away from going to the state competition that we had spent months working on. Some dealt with having a high school crush or gaining friends 
and other times it even meant losing friends. Some moments made you think on the spot about doing what's right or doing the cool thing. And then were, there were the obstacles that gave you the option to do what makes you happy, even though there were a lot of consequences that could come with it. While some things I could easily get past, others took a lot of help and willpower to overcome. But without all these difficulties that were put in my life, I couldn't have discovered what I want to be when I'm older or even begin to think about what I want to do after college. While getting through some of these obstacles was a challenge, I realized that there was a time for everything, or as the old saying goes and as cliche as it sounds, everything happens for a reason. As Ecclesiastes states, there is a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace them and a time to refrain from embracing. While remembering these sayings and scriptures and pushing through with determination to the best of my ability, I knew that God was, is, and will always be there to bring peace into my life to carry me through to the future. Now, with nearly one month of high school left, I can look back and be happy that I was determined to set a goal to get where I am today. When I made those decisions of joining dance team or running for student council officer or even taking that homework filled business class, I can honestly say that it all paid off. And now with college in the near future, I can expect on many more obstacles knowing that through my friends, my family, people in my community, and God, when the time is right, I can overcome whatever I set my mind to and ultimately find peace in my life. This sermon comes from the scripture of Isaiah 57, 19. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. Peace. Peace can be a strange and confusing thing. However you find peace in your lives, whether getting in your car and blasting music or sitting in a quiet room, God is with you. He is helping you find that peace. Peace can be hard for some people to find, especially in really stressful situations. In Isaiah 57, 19, God wishes upon them peace, far and near. He will help them all and heal them. To me, far can be anywhere whether across the world in China or in heaven. I don't think that verse limits it to just the living. Living in a religious home, I grew up being told and taught that heaven is supposed to be a peaceful place. I honestly wouldn't know what to think of it if I didn't think it were peaceful. It would be scary. Oftentimes at funerals, you hear he or she is at peace now. You may be thinking, how can God heal them if they are gone? Well, they are at peace because they are with him. They are healed because they are no longer sick anymore. I know peace is frustrating at times to find, but it's all up to God and you. The theme of Youth Sunday is about the future and going through the obstacles and hard times, but knowing God is there, will be there to guide you. Going into the future can be scary, but it's how we handle it that can make it not so scary. For some people, that could be finding peace and talking to God or simply doing something to get their mind off the stressful thing that is happening. The world now is full of scary situations, and there is nothing we can do to make the situations better. It may be hard, but find one good thing in all of the bad ones. There already is one good thing. That is knowing God is there. Knowing that somehow, in some way, things will eventually get better. For me, I'm scared of the future. College, a career, and eventually a family. But I've lived a religious life, and I know God will get me through tough times, and I'm not afraid to embrace that. Talking about finding peace reminds me of an article I read. It's about a dog named Cheeseburger. <laughs> a guy named Marion pulled up outside of Applebee's, noticing the dog lying in the shade outside of the restaurant. Looking at the dog, he was hoping it wasn't dead, as it was not moving. Thankfully, it was alive. Marion, being a dog lover, went inside Applebee's and was frustrated somebody left a poor dog out in the heat. He saw a man named John, the manager of Applebee's, and the owner of the dog. After talking to John for a little bit, Marion felt really bad for snapping and getting so frustrated at him. The dog was John's only friend. They had been together for close to 10 years, and they lived in a tent in the woods behind the restaurant. Marion asked John, what keeps you going? You have no friends, no house, no family. John simply replied, the Lord. John wakes up every morning 
He looks at the sky and says, Lord, I am yours and I trust you. Take care of me today. Amen. Marion felt kind of relaxed after John told him that. If John, living the hard life he was, could get through it every living the hard life he is could get through it every day, Marion knew he could too. After talking with John and helping him get the dog water and some food, Marion got in his car to go home. Before he left, he looked up at the sky and said, Lord, I belong to you and I trust you. Take care of me today. Amen. He looked out his window and saw John smiling. He drove away with a new feeling, peace. I'm only 18. Yes, that seems impossible, being an adult and having responsibilities. I haven't had a lot of experience with peace. There are only a few occasions that I remember specifically where I actually felt God with me. Honestly, five years ago, peace was not the first thing on my mind. We were planning for a visitation and two funerals, along with traveling to Indiana and back. I was angry and confused and all around busy. Peace was far from my body. After everything settled down, I went in my bedroom and thought. I started praying, although it was just more like talking and eventually yelling. I was mad, though. I was only 13. My father had just died, the only man I trusted at that point. I was mad at God for taking him away from me. I had my whole life ahead of me, and right there and then, it felt like it was all taken away. I yelled. I took my feelings out on God. At the end of my little rampage, I felt peace. I knew God was sitting there with me. I felt him. I also felt my father. Saying it would be okay, saying he would still be there with me. Saying it was okay to feel normal and at peace again. I started feeling normal. I felt peace more often. Every Sunday when I walked through these doors here, I was greeted with hugs and everybody would check on me. I couldn't have done it without all of you sitting here. You gave me the ability to see peace in a really hard time. Now it's five years later, I'm 18, and I'm going to graduate and go to Western. And honestly, I'm the happiest I have probably ever been. God works wonders, and he is tolerant. That's the thing that amazes me. You can sit and yell and blame him, and God always comes around and makes you feel better. At least he does for me. And God will always be there. God will be there in your future and in mine. I'm ready to take on the future. I'm ready to go out into the real world. Knowing I can turn to God whenever I may need, and he will always be there, granting peace.
we gather at the table as disciples, we remember that this is the place of ultimate peace. <coughs> After the meal, Jesus took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body given to you. After the bread, he took wine, and he blessed it, and he poured it, and he gave it to them, saying, this is my blood shed for you. Each time you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, remember me. Let us pray. We gather at this communion table to share this bread as a church family, and offering this bread to one another, and in blessing and breaking it, but and taking and eating of it. We do what you asked us to do in remembering you. We come to this table to receive this cup and to drink from it and to be blessed by it. We know by doing so we experience Jesus here with us as we drink from it. May the strength of your spirit be given to us so we may better serve you. Amen.
need that money up there. Well, why do you need it? I take it for offering. I usually take it for my mom and dad because they don't bring any. And my mom put it higher on the shelf last night. That's a pretty good reason. I'll help you. Here you go. Thank you. Who are you, anyway? I'm the spirit of offering, child. Thank you, spirit of offering. We should probably be giving that money to the church. Let's go. Do you have any offering to give? In fact, we do. Here you go. I'm glad we got the money here. Well, I think today you even had a great spirit like me a lesson, kid. After all, that is the power of offering. Dear Lord, we thank you today for showing us on a daily basis how we can help others in the world around us. We know that you always find a way to show us our next action we can use to show our love for you. Even when we stray from you, you always find a way to bring us back. We thank you today for letting us be here and to show others the true power of offering. Amen. If you would like to become a member of First Christian Church, our minister will greet you up here as we are singing our closing hymn, number 600, Yezu, Yezu.
matter what obstacles will arise, no God is there to guide you through. Having a little trust and peace of mind will help you through that process. Go forth, knowing God will be there guiding you through the tough times. Please be seated for the playing of the postlude, and at the end, the youth will be up front if you would like to greet them. <laughs> 